Welcome to the Jamodi Podcast, where we interview coaches and leaders to find out not just what they do, but how they do what they do. Becoming the best version of ourselves is Jamodi, just a matter of doing it. What is your favorite culture building activity? Yeah, great question. And first of all, I will say with the culture building activity, the first activity is not really an activity, but mm. it's deciding that culture is going to be intentional, that you're going to actually do it on purpose. You're going to design a culture that looks like what you want it to be. Most coaches, and I'll come back to the actual activity, sure. but most coaches uh, end up having a culture that wasn't what they planned on. It's not quite where I wanted to end up. That's because we're not serious about culture. Uh, we, every coach has a culture. Yep. It might not be the culture you want, but it's the culture you deserve. Mm. It's the culture you've allowed or it's the culture you've emphasized and intentionally planned for. A lot of times, so so one of the first kind of activities would be figure out what you want. Where do you want to end up five years from now, 10 years from now, or what do you want your culture to be? What do you want people to say about your brand, your program? When when they think about your kids, what do they you want people to think about your kids or think about your staff or think about, you know, the name on the front of the jersey? What what kind of image does that put in their head? So that's what you've got to figure out. You know, Simon Sinek talks Simon Sinek has a book, talks about the why, know your why. Mm. Um, you have to know your why of your program, know what you want your program to be. And then you have to work backwards then reverse engineer. So, so the first thing you have to do is decide, I want this culture. I want this healthy, strong culture, whatever that's going to look like. And then the next thing is you work backwards. All right. How can I get there? What would it look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah. And so those are a couple of things that we don't normally think of, but the activity, write it down. We're going to, we're going to learn or excuse me, we're going to uh, absorb and be more likely to achieve our goals when we write them down. The yeah. same is with culture. What do you want it to look like? And then how do you do it every day to achieve that goal? And so let's say, um, Let's say you want your culture to be toughness. Our kids are going to be tough, not just weight room tough, but mentally tough. They're going to be able to handle adversity. They're going to handle challenges. They're going to be able to come through a COVID pandemic, yeah. you know, without losing their minds. They're, they're going to be tough mentally. I think uh, most, of, most of us are familiar with Tom Izzo at Michigan mm. State. I think most of us would say he has a culture of toughness. No when doubt. When we think of Michigan State, we think toughness first. Okay. Well, he has to figure out how is this going to look every day. And so for him, some of those things is going to be he's going to recruit the right players. He's not going to recruit a bunch of mental midgets, yep. a bunch of softies, prima donnas, because that's not going to fit into the culture of toughness. So he's going to recruit the right people. He's going to have the right support staff that also believes the same way he does. And then all of his drills, all of the things that he does is probably going to be learning lessons. Yeah. You know, so when Matt, when, when Matt has an issue, maybe his grandmother dies, maybe Matt's struggling in school, maybe Matt has a tough game. Well, now when I talk with Matt, it's going to be about, Hey, you know, you're a tough kid. That's why I recruited you, Matt. I know you can get through this. This is tough and we are here for you, but here are some of the things, some of the resources we have available for you to help you through this because you're going to need some X's and O's to get through it, yeah. but you already have the qualities because you're a tough kid. And this is how you're going to use your toughness to overcome this adversity, overcome these challenges that you're experiencing right now, whatever those are. And so he's going to provide and equip you with the resources to do that. And then you're going to come through it on the other side because you're tough. And because I've just given you resources to help you be better at that. But all that stuff kind of goes into what do you want your culture to be? And then every day you're going to live it out. You're going to encourage people um, to, to, to do things the right way. Uh, one of my favorite activities, and this is going to sound absolutely cliche, generic, boring, whatever, but we are going to encourage one another. Mm. When we see somebody doing what's right, 
we're going to be like, that is how we do things. Matt, awesome, Matt. That is how we do things here. And I'm constantly, constantly, constantly with my verbiage, I'm telling you and reminding everybody else, this is how we do things here in our program. This is how we do things. This is how the team five years ago did things when they won a championship. This is how we did things last year when we didn't win as much, but we persevered through and we got through because this is how we do things. And it's about the journey and the process, not about the destination Mm -hmm. because we're never at a finish line. You're never at a finish line with being a leader. You're never at a finish line with culture. We're fighting every day for that culture. And so constantly out of my mouth, I'm saying, this is how we do things. This is how we do things because I want Matt to say it to Joe and I want Joe to say it to Jalen. I want Jalen to say it to Chris and on and on down the line. And that's what's going to come out of my mouth all the time. And we're going to encourage one another to fight for our culture daily. So it's not an actual activity like, hey, let's, let's, uh, 15 minutes. This is the drill. This is the game. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not that because culture is not about one thing that you do. Yeah. Yep. And that's where, you know, as coaches, all right, we're going against the zone, man. Just give me, just give me a zone offense. Give me something to go against this matchup zone. Give me something to go against a triangle and two, you know, give me the, the, the magic, the secret <laughs> sauce. And there's no magic wand to culture. Yeah. Culture is every single day fighting for your culture. And so your habits every day, your choices every day is going to lead to a, a healthy culture or not lead to a healthy culture. I think the intentionality that you're talking about that coaches need to have, that's huge because we're not going to have the culture we want by accident. It's not just going to somehow we're going to stumble upon, oh, wow. You know, sometimes some players are wired a certain way, especially in high school, because, you know, the, the college coaches do have the ability to pull the guys that they know will fit. But even then, they still have to have those make those daily choices to keep their culture going. But at the high school level where you've got kids coming from many different places and have many different abilities or or in different mindsets, what, what's, what, um, what advice do you have for a high school coach that is fighting for their culture, knows what it is, is trying to live it out every day, but has these kids that are coming from such different places? Yeah, it's it's a great question. And and it's very common. It, It, this is something that happens a lot. An old Chinese proverb says the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is now. But if we can be like, all right, I'm going to plant a tree. I'm going to plant a tree now because 20 years from now, I'm going to see the reap the benefits. I'm going to see the benefits of that. Or the other proverb I like, or the other saying I like is, is dig your well when you're, you know, before you're thirsty, dig your well before you're thirsty, fix your roof when it's sunny out. In other words, all that kind of stuff to say, we want a culture that's good now. Well, we need to start on it previous in Mm. in previous years. So when five years ago, when we had our program and we have now alumni, those kids have now gone on to college or whatever, those kids and their parents can be recruiting tools for you or not recruiting tools, but they can speak well of you. Mm. Also, success leaves clues. Hopefully your program is now better than it was previously, but it's better now because of everyone that came before us. You know, if, if we, if we lay down under a shade tree to get out of the sun, somebody planted that shade tree, Mm. or if we drink from the well, somebody built that well, you know, somebody did things in the past to make our program what it is now. So we, you're at a high school. Yep. You're at a high school. We can't recruit players. Let's say, uh, you know, you're at a public school. You can't recruit players, all that kind of stuff. Okay. But your program now can be evidence of what our culture is and what our players are going to be like when they come through our program. They're going to be better young men. They're going to be better young women having been in our program. And I can show you this based upon where our program is now, but what's happened with the kids that have come before you. Hmm. Uh, now let's say you're starting out. Let's say you don't have that success leaves clues. You don't have that residue. You don't have that evidence. You know, you've decided, Hey, we're not where we need to be. Or maybe you've taken over a program, you know, well, how can I make a quick fix? Well, you can't, there's no quick fixes with culture. There's only quick beginnings. You can begin quickly. (laughs) Hey, I want to start now. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, a year from now, you'll wish you started today. Mm -hmm. Start today. 
to make your culture what you want it to be like. So every single uh, stakeholder, every single person that comes in contact with your program is part of your culture, whether you like it or not. Mm. So you mentioned kids. Kids will be coming from far away. Well, their parents are too. Yep. You know, the parents are part of your culture. Your managers are part of your culture. Your custodians are part of your culture. Your principals are on down the line. If they're involved with your program, they're part of your culture, whether you like it or not, and whether you want them to be involved. Yeah. Um, and so all of those things can go into your culture. So don't just focus on your 15 kids. Focus on everybody that has a stake in your program, because this is all one big family. It's all one big community that goes into your culture. Because you're not always going to be around, coach. You're not always going to be in the locker room. You're not yep. going to be in that ride home with the kid and their that's parents. A, that's a great point. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to be in the stands when there's five sets of parents sitting around talking. You're not going to be at the concession stand when a couple parents are getting hot dogs and talking about the game at halftime. But if you've brought them into your program and you've included them in your program, you've treated them well, you've treated them with respect. You explain things when you need to explain things. You take them seriously. Now, all of a sudden, you have a little bit better chance. Now, it's not perfect, but you have a little bit better chance of them having ownership and buying into what you're trying to do as a coach. And all that matters because you could do the best activities in the world. You could hire me. I could come in and do the greatest team building activities ever. You could have the greatest X's and O's drills ever. But if that parent does not like you and is not bought into you, it all is ruined. It's like I could exercise 12 hours a day, but if all the other 12 hours I'm eating cherry pie <laughs> and hamburgers, you, you can't out train your diet. Mat- That's right. No. <laughs> so, so we have to bring all these stakeholders in and, and be aware of that. And that's difficult. It's not easy. That's why when I talk, people don't always like to listen because it's not easy. I'm mm-hmm. not giving them that two, three zone or yeah, I'm not giving yeah. them that press break. That'll break every press. I'm not, I'm not the guy who, when, the, you know, I'm having an issue with my wife and we're, we're at, at, you know, we're button heads, which translation means I did something wrong. Right. But when my wife and I aren't getting along, yeah, it'd be great if I could just bring home flowers and everything's great. Or I bring home chocolates or a card. Uh, more work than that needed. <laughs> yeah. That only it's a band aid temporarily. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got to do so much more as a husband and wife or as a husband yep. to smooth things over the same way as a coach. It's easier to put in a new drill. It's not so easy to, to actually treat people with respect all the time, to dive into their lives, to talk to a parent when we don't want to talk to a parent mm. or when they're being an idiot. Mm. Um, that's tough because it's just tough dealing with human people or de- human people. Uh, that's redundant, but dealing with people (laughs) too many times as coaches, especially like as a basketball coach, I would have a bask, I I would have a, 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 a a problem that really stems from relationships and people, but I would try to solve it with a basketball solution. Mm. You know, uh, you know, Jalen and Chris aren't getting, you know, they're not executing the play, right? Well, we'll just put in a different play. Well, the problem is Jalen and Chris either don't like each other. They don't trust each other. Or maybe they like each other, but they have different agendas. They both want the college scholarship. Or maybe they like each other. They have the same agenda, but they don't like me as a coach or trust me as a coach. Yeah. Or trust someone else on the team. And so too many times we're trying to solve this this people issue with a basketball solution, and it doesn't work out that way. I had a big light bulb moment a second ago when you really talked about the bringing in more people, the people that are connected to your players bringing them into your culture. I, I think I think most coaches focus on 90% of the time, the 15 guys they have and making sure that they know the culture and they're in it. So I'm thinking about our, our you know, here's maybe a, a drill or activity that we like to do weekly here. It's an IUE conversation. So we have our group sitting around. Uh, they, they have to each speak. One I is what's one thing I'm doing well? And it's an area of improvement that I see in myself because a lot of players have a hard time even though the, you have the outliers that they they never think they do anything wrong, most players struggle 
to see the good that they are doing and the improvements. And then you is getting outside of yourself and seeing a teammate for something that they're doing well. And then we, what as a team, as a group, as a family, how are we improving? Like that's a great activity that we do. And our players get a ton out of it. Our culture grows. But if the player doesn't go home and articulate exactly what we do in our IUEs, that's not affecting their parents or bringing them on board in any way. So what is something do you think that besides just, you know, maybe getting on a Zoom with parents or bringing them in, how do we bring them into our culture more? Yeah, the, the Zoom thing is a great thing. And, and I would not call it a Zoom thing. Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't have a, I don't have a great catchy thing for parents necessarily. I need to start brainstorming about it. But, but that reminds me too, and I'll come back to your question in a, here in a minute, but uh, try not to talk to your players anymore in terms of we're going to have a Zoom meeting. Mm. Now you will use Zoom and here is a Zoom link, but everything should have like a, a catchy phrase, like almost put lipstick on a pig. Okay. It's still a pig, but it looks slightly better because it has lipstick on it. Okay. Try to, you know, maybe you have, uh, you know, chalk talk Thursday. Okay. Or we're going to have a motivational Monday. You know, it's still a Zoom call. It's a Zoom call on Monday. Whatever you're going to do, call it something different. So that was just, a, that's an aside. I love that. But, no, but try huge. to get away. Don't call it a Zoom meeting. We're going to have motivational Monday and here's your Zoom link. Or we're going to have a parent, you know, uh, a pretty cool, you know, a, a parent, a parent meeting. You know, here's your Zoom link. Or yeah. we're going to have whatever. Here's your Zoom link. That's just a side note, but do have those Zoom meetings. Have something with your parents. Have cookouts with your parents. Mm. Have meals with your parents. Invite them into the locker room once in a while. Oh my goodness, gasp. A collective gasp from your audience. <laughs> Not the locker room. That's our that's, that's our sacred. Sac <laughs> that's sacred. Okay. Well, churches are sacred too, and you let parents in there. Good All right. Call. Don't don't take things that we do so seriously because here's the thing, especially high school, especially high school, but it's even, it's even uh, uh, come into the college game too. Parents are having more of an influence on the college game than ever before, but especially at the high school level, you said it yourself, you might have these IU we type things, but it doesn't translate and get home to the parents. The same way, everything you talk about with your kids at practice and in meetings at school doesn't get home. Yeah. I mean, how many permission slips never get home to that's your right. kids? And that's a, a tangible physical thing that's in their hand. Well, now you put a thought in their head after you've just done five line drills at the end of practice, Yeah, you know, or you've yelled at them because you had a terrible practice. And now you tell them, Hey, remember to tell your parents this, or yeah. you tell them something that should get home to their parents or a philosophy type thing. They're not going to remember that stuff. Mm. Bring those parents in. Now I was a coach. And I coached at the college level and I could get away with this a little bit, but it didn't help our culture. I was the kind of coach early on in my career that said, I'm going to talk to you as a player. It's your responsibility to tell your parents what I say. I'm not going to talk to your parents about playing time. I'm not going to talk to them about your role on the team. That's, I'm going to talk to you about that. You can then talk to your parents. The problem with this in, invariably is that it creates a void. Yeah. There's a void of communication and almost any time you avoid something, it creates a void. So I would avoid talking with them about playing time. And right now there's a collective gasp of your audience. I don't want to talk to these parents about playing time because they're idiots. They don't understand. <laughs> they're not going to see things the way I see things. 100% right. And that's why you need to talk yeah, to them help about them. it. Help them. Because yeah. they aren't going to see it. They yeah. see their tree and not the whole forest. If you avoid talking to them about it for whatever reason, there then creates a void. Mm. You avoid, it creates a void. And 99.9% .9 of the time, that void will be filled with stuff that you don't want it to be filled with. They are not going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And so you either need to communicate with them about stuff or you need to build up such emotional deposits, deposits so much in this emotional bank account that they do give you the, the benefit of the doubt at least one time. But most of us don't do that. We don't share information with them. Mm. We don't bring them into our inner circle because it's our circle. Yeah. And then they don't take ownership 
in decisions. They don't take ownership. They're not invested in the team and they don't give you the benefit of the doubt. We don't develop connections. If you're going to have tough conversations with people, then you need to have strong bonds because otherwise those tough conversations will not go anywhere. You have to have a strong bond if you're going to have a tough conversation. And that's why coaches like Greg Popovich have been so good over the years, or even a Steve Kerr, or, you know, going back Phil Jackson with the Bulls and, and Chuck Daly with the Detroit Pistons are a lot of the great coaches. They have good, strong bonds, strong connections with their players. And, sometimes with the the parents and they're able to talk to those people. Obviously pro coaches aren't talking to the parents very often. Yeah. Though, though it's getting more and more, you know, uh, you know, once the ball family came into the NBA, that's right. That's that brought right. parents into the that's NBA. That's true. What do you think about this I, I, idea of, so my son is getting more and more into select ball now and I've coached select ball over the years. He's going to be a freshman. He's finishing up his eighth grade year right now. You know, and I take him to practice and I sit there at these practices and I've I've noticed over the years, it seems like, you know, the parents and, and our and players even are, there's this, there's more of a bond or investment in those select teams. They almost talk about it in a, in a, a fond sense or like they're really connected. But so I started to think, okay, I'm sitting there at practice. One, I get to sit with a lot of the parents more. Um, it's not a game, so I'm not just so on edge. You know, I'm just really chill. But then, two, I'm getting to listen to this coach say everything that he's saying, good or bad. But I'm I'm more in the know of the why behind we're doing this and what we're doing. That you know, if I'm paying attention, what are your thoughts about as a high school coach? Open and here's that you said you said that a gasp a few times. Opening up practice to allow parents to come in and see not just. Hey, my son's a, my son's not doing well. Well, you know what? He says you're yelling at him. Come into practice. Not not just that, but just having more of an open policy, encouraging them, inviting them in. What are your thoughts on that? I I, I love all of those ideas. I love any of that that you can do, provided you've actually given thought to it. Yeah. So give thought to how it's going to look. Don't just open your the floodgates. Mm. Don't just willy-nilly be like, oh, I just listened to this great podcast. And they had this speaker on and he said, open up practice. So we're going to do that. Well, think about how it might look for your team. Think about, are you going to give them a practice plan? Are you going to talk to them when they come into the gym? Are you going to talk to them before they leave the gym? Are you going to have a, a, like a, a almost a, a, a halftime or a timeout? Yeah. Are you going to go over, what are you going to do with them during practice? You know, yeah, are don't, you don't just waste their, don't waste their night. Like, why did I even come to this? I mean, <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. don't just do it without thought. Yeah. Because it can backfire because if you really are a jerk as a coach, that's going to backfire even worse. So think about exactly how you want to do it. Have your staff talk to you about it, you know, brainstorm it, go with some pros and cons because this is a scary thing. It, it can backfire the same way it can be positive, but I I see mostly positive if right. you're a wise coach and you use it correctly. Um, you mentioned the select teams or AAU teams or those kind of themes. Most of the time, not always, but most of the time parents are paying money. Yep. If not a, a fee, they're paying hotel, they're paying food. You know, that's an expensive summer mm -hmm. for them. Uh, if nothing else, travel, but they're invested. Yep. As a high school coach, you have to find a way to get your parents invested. You don't typically quit mentally or physically on something that you're invested in. The more you're invested in it, the longer it'll take you to quit. Uh, you know, the more sweat you've had, the sweat equity you have in something, uh, the more you'll have to bleed. I think there's even some quote, probably General Patton said something like that. But, but the more sweat you have, the longer you'll have to bleed before you quit, essentially. Yeah. So, so as a high school coach, can you get parents invested in the process? Can you have committees? Can you get different parents doing different things? And and I know most of us will try to do like some kind of a parent group or, hey, can you guys bring drinks to the game or, or something like that? But try to get every parent involved. It may not look the same for every parent, and it may not even be something official, but it might be just going up to the parent that doesn't ever do anything and, and seems to be very reserved, going up to Matt and be like, hey, Matt, I know that you, uh, I know that you own this business. And I'm not, no, 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 no. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking for your money, Matt. Right. What I'm saying is 
I know that you own this business or you, you work in this field. So you have this skill set. I'm wondering, could you talk to our kids about something in that field? Or can you do this for our team? Let's say maybe you work at a church and you use their audio visual. You're the guy that, that makes the microphones work. Hey, Matt, at the end of the year, we're going to have a banquet. I was wondering, could, could you just make sure that our speaker system is set up? Yeah. I, I, that's a silly example, but no, find it's, it's a, great. Just like yeah. all 15 year players, you're trying to find a way to utilize all of them within your team concept yeah. and, and to find value, add value and significance to all of those kids. Try to do the same thing with your parents so that they feel invested in your program a little bit. Now it can once again, backfire because they might feel like, well, I'm so invested that I have a say in things. And, and coach needs to listen to me. Has but to have know, that, that healthy boundary still has to be there. Yeah. But I go back to, here's the issue. The reality is they're going to feel like you need to listen to them anyways. And they're mm -hmm. going to want to have a voice anyway. So you mm -hmm. might as well try, you know, keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. Try to bring them in that inner circle as much as possible with, with wisdom, with Man. wisdom, yeah. because they're going to talk. They're going to talk regardless. The only question is, are you shaping that narrative at all? Are you helping to put things in their mind that's positive? Or are they just going to have this big vacuum in their mind where they just, anything comes into that and they just talk bad about you? Um, you're trying to build up some trust there. You're trying to give, have them give you a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. And it might not be for the whole year. It might just, you just need them to give you the benefit of the doubt for one game. You know, they think you screwed their kid over. Okay, well, if they give you the benefit of for one game, that might be enough. Yeah. Whereas another parent, if you mess over their kid and you haven't built up a strong connection with them, they're not going to give you the benefit of the doubt. And they might go to the principal right away. Uh, they might go to the board right away. They might go to five other parents right away. And you could have a mutiny on your hand just because you didn't, you didn't invite them to the barbecue or just because you didn't uh, bring them into to that culture that you have. So. I, I'm, uh, you, you said it a little bit ago that you, you, the biggest thing or most important thing with culture is that you start today, you know, you, you get going with it. And I'm just thinking of the, I've been, I've been at this school for eight years when I was a varsity assistant at, at my previous school, which is a public school. It was a mo way more of a me versus them, us versus them mentality between coaches and parents. But thank you for sharing all that about, because what I'm thinking about are really the wasted opportunities that I've had or times where I could have brought them in more. So it, it's that, that's the charge. The charge today is, is start. Yeah. And let me say one more thing about that, Matt. And I've kind of said it, I've alluded to it already. I don't have a number on this, but I would say a hundred percent of your coaches that are listening to this yep. have had parent problems in the past, doing it the way that they've always done it. Mm. We bang our head against the wall with issues like that. And I was the same way as a coach. 100% of your coaches bang your head against the wall about parents doing it the way they've always done it. How about we try something different? How about, and, and, and out of that 100%, probably 80% of the people listening to this try to kind of be hands off. It's like they're poison ivy, or it's like you said, us versus them. Yep. And, and it could go for the principals too. Sometimes principal superintendents, you know, well, they don't care or they're, they're making my job tougher or whatever. Parents, they're idiots. You know, they only have their kid's best interest at mind. Yeah, they do. What's so wrong about that? You know, you know, the enemy, if you want to look at it from an enemy standpoint, I don't look at it as they're the enemy, but if you want to look at it that way, you know, the enemy, you know, what their motivation is. You already have a leg up. Use that. Hey, yeah. Hey Matt, you know, I know that, you know, your son, Joey, hasn't been playing very – I don't know if that's your son's name, but yeah. – what's your son's name? Landon, but Joey's, Landon. Joey's good. <laughs> Joey, yeah. Uh, you know, I know Landon hasn't been playing as much as you would like. What would be some ideas that you have for motivating him? How do you motivate him around the house? You know, and listen, I can't promise you that he's going to play more. I, I can't promise playing time. Yeah. But what I can promise is I'm going to help him get better. I want Landon to get better. And I think you want that too, don't you? Don't you want Landon to get better? Right. Well, yes, they're going to yeah. shake their head. Yes. Do I have your permission to help him get better? Well, yeah, of course, coach. That's your job. You, you need to help him get better. Okay. 
well, this is my plan. I, I want him to do this, this, and this, and we're going to work with him after practice or before practice. This is my plan for him. Does that sound like it's a good idea? Yeah, that's, that's great. Okay, well, we're going to try to help him get better. Once again, cannot promise playing time, but I can promise that he's probably going to get a little bit better. And when he gets better, the team is going to get better. And we're also going to be on the lookout for ways to utilize him. Um, and you might even ask more questions about, well, what do you think, you know, uh, what, what would be some of his strengths? You know, what are some of the weaknesses? What are some of the things he needs to work on? And he's probably going to say, you know, if you kind of talk to him from a respectful standpoint as a yeah. dad. Yeah. But what you're doing is, is you're jumping in there, you're bringing him into the process, but you're also doing what you should do as a coach. You're promising that you're going to help kids or, or provide kids with an opportunity to get better. Now, obviously, we all have had kids that aren't motivated. They're not self-motivated. You know, maybe they can't, you know, they couldn't play dead in a Western movie. You know, we have all had these kids that are only playing the sport because their friends playing the sport, but they can still get better. Yep. It's not that we take them from a one to a 10. It might just be we take them from a one to a two and then a two to a three. So they go from bad to not as bad. And you might be you know, able to unlock something in them too, that they, the, the, the love of the game can grow. It's not just something that is natural. Well, Tom Brady, as a freshman, he played on an 0 and 8 freshman team and he was the backup quarterback. I mean, the dude couldn't even start on an 0 and 8 freshman team. <laughs> now, now, obviously, we know he had some talent, but how many coaches out there, or how many players out there, you know, there's not going to be a lot of Tom Brady's out there that become the GOAT, but how many players out there are maybe in the wrong role mm -hmm. or they've just never had somebody speak something into them? Uh, I'll give you a story, Matt. Um, last year, I had this guy reach out to me, direct message me. He was a guy that played at the University of Michigan, MVP at the University of Michigan, played professionally for like the last 13 years, 14 years overseas. Had a pretty good career, a uh, good player. And he reached out to me and he wanted to thank me for what I told him at a University of Michigan camp back when he was a sixth grader. And I was like, okay. He was like, yeah, you were the first coach that ever gave me confidence I could play point guard because he was a little bit taller. So, you know, a tall sixth grader is going to be a post player. He was like, you're the first person that gave me confidence that I could play point guard and I, I could be a good player as a guard. Now, I didn't. I didn't take him from a sixth grader to a professional basketball player. And we went on to, you know, I, I went on to, we talked more and more, but I was a guy that gave him confidence one week to get to the next week. Mm. And then someone else that next week is going to take him to another week. And someone else is going to take him to the next week and then yeah. take him to seventh grade and take him to eighth grade. It doesn't have to be, we get someone to the finish line. It just is that we we speak life into them and we give them confidence and we catch them being good to move maybe to the next 10 minutes of their life to get through that day or to get through that week or that season of their life. And, and that's the same way these athletes, we're going to have some athletes on our team, especially at the high school level that don't care about basketball or don't care about whatever sport it is, but they can still get better and they can still have some fun. And it won't be that they become a college athlete, but it might just be they have a little bit more fun and you know what? They find more value in their life and they go from being bad to average. And in some cases, that's going to be a huge win. That's a win. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.